God is good. And his presence is awesome. Awesome. Everybody say awesome. Awesome. Is the presence of the Lord. Oh, we got a couple of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you turn to Galatians 6? No, you don't even have to go there yet. Just hang tough. I'm going to go to Galatians 6. You're going to listen with ears to hear. Reality. In Galatians chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 9. No, you, I mean verse 7. You can come there if you want, but you don't have to. <laughs> in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, I know it's in my Bible. I quit passing over it. The word says, do not be deceived. We're going to talk sometime here shortly about the accursed items, spiritual cursed items and physical cursed items. But I want you to know that deception is a spiritual cur- accursed item. And we'll talk about more of these later, but not today. So, he says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, nobody gets away with it. Amen? For whatever man sows, that he's going to reap. So whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You're not going to get away with it. Amen? Now he, he specifies something very powerful. He says, for he who sows to his flesh, his old man, his old character, his human nature, will of the flesh, he, that person will reap corruption. Hmm. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. In this area of sowing means breath. What you speak. What you sow. If you speak corruptive words, you will receive corruption. When you speak words of life according to Christ, you will receive life. Amen? That's why many people don't realize that reading the Word of God is totally different than speaking the Word of God. Well, I read my Bible all day long, ain't nothing happening to me. No kidding, homie. Because you're deceived. And now you're accursed. Hello? He says this in verse 9. He says, listen, don't let us not, uh, and, and let us not grow weary while we're doing good, while we're sowing in the Spirit. Because you got to run to reaping your soul in the flesh. Don't, don't, don't grow worry. For in due season we will reap if we don't want. Lose heart. In other words, if you don't, stop sowing in the Spirit. Hello. Now, because what happens is we get what things that we speak, we sow ourselves corruptible seeds. And you cannot fertilize a corruptible seed. <laughs> with, it's just impossible with righteousness a corruptible seed cannot be changed it must be removed and destroyed so people that are carrying corruptible seeds in them oh, I'm just going to sow righteousness it's not going to work you got to kill that seed and remove it you cannot fertilize a corruptible seed with righteousness does everybody understand you can't it must be removed and destroyed Everybody got it. I, we need to just start with this. You know, because more and more people are being deceived. And, they're, and, and people are being misled in that area. There's something very important. The word says, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. There's a place of dwell. Amen. That means in the spirit. It tells us that. Nothing can harm us or hurt us or whatever. We're protected. See, when a person moves out of the secret place, there's no more protection. There's a place where consistency must be established. That means we must constantly sow in the Spirit to keep things going. Now you can go to Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Now, during worship today, the Lord said, keep going. So for some of you that are irritated by worshiping longer, it's because you are being led by the old man and not the spirit. The more we worship, the more there's a separation between the old and the new. If you're thinking, man, this is just too long, you're in the flesh. Your man is still leading your life, your human nature, and not the spirit. See, there's the, the human nature of a person. There's a regener, gener, regenerating nature of an individual. And then there's the spiritual man. And in this regeneration, there must be cooperation. The walk is a spiritual man or man, spiritual woman. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, it says something very important. It says, if you'll speak it with me, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you don't do the things that you what? That you wish. So we see here that the natural man with his fallen nature and a new created individual, a new creation person, his spirit, his new creation with regenerating nature, there is a continuous battle and a war until death do them part. Hello. Does everybody get it? You know, there used to be marriages, you know. I haven't heard that in a while. Till death do you part, you know. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> But that's the way it is. In a marriage, until you are, you're, you, your old man, your flesh, your carnal man, your natural man dies, then you can get divorced. Hello? Then you're separated. So you will fight that old nature to the day you depart. Somebody get it? Now, there's an area in all of this because when you begin to look at what, what's really happening, it, it's pretty powerful. Because then it says here, if, if, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, which is death, hell, and the grave. And then he explains what the flesh is, and he explains what walking in the flesh is. So we might as well go over it. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are what? Evidence which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is drugs or witchcraft. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts, arrests, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like it, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because that cannot enter the kingdom of God. A person living in that condition will not enter the kingdom of God. Not that God doesn't have the last say. Amen? We don't know when somebody is in a coma or what's happening. But God has the last say. But I sure don't want to take chances. Hello. And then he says something very important. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, or control over the old man. Against there is no law. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Again, the natural man with its fallen nature and the new creation with its regenerating nature, continuously there is a war until death do them part. Only the leading of the new nature of the new creation enters the kingdom of Christ. Only that. Go to Genesis 5 for a second. In fact, the title is called Until Death. And you can put in parentheses, do we part? <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 5, verse 1. Glory. And this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. I mean, you know, Adam was created in the image and likeness of God. Amen? In other words, he was a 
divine being with a divine nature until he blew it. Amen? And it says, in the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him what? Seth. So, Adam, this is the first, the first, the first one was killed. We have Cain and Abel, amen? Abel was killed. He was the human nature man. Cain was the wicked nature man. Cain, the wicked nature man, killed the human nature man. Then when Seth came, he was the first one that was of the human nature. Is everybody okay? Seth was the first offspring of the natural man and the human nature of carnality. Of course, he was not born again, was he? Amen. And 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3 and verse 11. Is everybody there? For this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain who was of the what? Wicked one. And murdered his brother who was what? Abel. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Don't marvel, my brethren, if the, if the world hates you. Oh, hallelujah. Now, uh, again, in this, Cain was known as the what? The wicked one. An evil nature. Seth was of human nature, but it was a fallen nature, but still a human nature with carnality. That's why we have to be what? Born again. So from that point on. Why? Because the rest of them were of a different blood. They were the offsprings. The wicked ones was the what? Offsprings of who? The serpent. Amen. And then the fallen angels. In John chapter 3. John 3 and verse 3. Now Jesus answered and said to him who is speaking to Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water. Now this word water means word, seed, and spirit. And that's his spirit. Amen? He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is what? His spirit, born of the seed of God, it's his word. His spirit then activates the words and assists in the regeneration of the new creation. It's a new creation nature. And we call this new creation nature called divine nature. Amen? The natural man, so now there's a natural man and there's a spiritual man. Now, if you notice that just because somebody gets born again, filled with the Spirit of God, praying in tongues or whatever, many times they're still not reached that level. Amen? Because they're in the process of regeneration. So that the divine nature has full control over the human nature, the carnal nature, the fallen nature. Amen? So again, there's that continuous battle in us. And it's until death do us part. Amen? So in this, we've got to be 
we got to use wisdom. Again, we're not to be, look at, books bring understanding, that's cool. Amen? But it's the Word of God that's in a book or in the Bible that feeds the new man. But it's this, the Spirit of God that fertilizes the seed. Does everybody get it? So without the presence of God, there's no fertilization. None. That's why there's many Christians still doing the stupid same things. That's why many of them who call themselves Christians are still voting for people that do abortions. Because they're not in a born again state of being. They can't see correctly. They can't hear correctly. And they're confessing to be Christians, but they read their Bible all day long. But they don't act like a new spiritual man. In fact, they don't even love God's presence, even though they say they do. Many of them never really experience God's presence to know what God's presence is really like. They go to schools, they go to seminaries and all kinds, but they've never really got to the presence of God to know that it's His presence, His person is everything. So that they can see clearly, so they can hear it clearly, so they can understand the benefits and the promises of God. Because that's what the enemy does. He comes and steals everything. It maintains a person's true identity of who they are in Christ. Amen? Oh, happy days. Titus 3. Glory. Man, as we were praising and worshiping, I kept seeing the old man trying to grab the new guy. Yo, come here. Couldn't get him. Tearing, 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 tearing away further and further. Man, the, the more you worship, the further the old man gets away from you. The more you crucify, you put your old man under your, what does it say? Put the serpent under your foot, put the old man under your foot. Now you're free. Free to hear, free to see, free to worship. Free to get healed. Now, now your faith is at a level to receive everything God has for you. Now you've accessed the storehouse and warehouses of the kingdom of Christ. And nothing is impossible. Hallelujah, Titus 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful, and hating one another. And when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of the regeneration. The washing, the word means washing. You are washed with the word. Through the washing, through the word of regeneration, and a what? Renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace or his plan, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, this is powerful. He said, look, at this is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly. Now, just keep feeding yourself with the word. Starve the old man. If you're not feeding the new man, you're feeding the old man. I want you to affirm this counsel that those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition knowing that such a person is warped and sinning and being self-condemned. In other words, there's some people you ain't going to turn. Even though they proclaim, they'll sit and argue with you over the doctrines. But they can't see, they can't hear, and they can't follow. Their love of God's presence is not there. Just not there. Washing of his word and renewing of his presence maintains his seeds of birth and gives you dom dominion over the old man. So, man, no, listen. So one of the ploys of the enemy is always to keep you distracted. 
Amen? I always avoid putting everything before God's presence. It's just a matter of time. Ephesians 4. Heck, you don't have to worry about demons. You got an old man that lives with you. Hello? He'll invite all of his friends. The family from hell. Ephesians 4, 17. Hallelujah. Let's speak at this. I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds or their thoughts, having their what? Under, so they're understanding. So when a person, whether it be a Christian or, or not, is not filled and led by the Spirit, the understanding is what? Unfruitful. There's no, that's why you can talk to many people that proclaim to be Christians, and they're still voting and promoting things that are God hates. Amen? He says they're being alienated from the life of God, even though they think that because they're reading their Bible that they're good. Because of the ignorance that is in them, ignorance in them, that's called deception. Because of the blindness of their heart. In other words, they can't see correctly. Who be in past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all in cleanness with what? Greediness. In other words, they put money before God's presence. He says, you've not so learned Christ then. You haven't maintained that. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you would what? Put off concerning the former conduct to what? The old man that which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Well, that's not happening then to these individuals. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the what? New man which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? And holiness. Wow. <laughs> See, the natural man of the fallen nature, his understanding is darkened. It's darkened. They can't see correctly. They can't hear correctly. They're misled. They're deceived. Because of what? Lack of what? God's presence. 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, happy days. Until death do us part. You know, did you ever think about why people commit suicide? Why the thought of suicide is there? Because they want to kill the old man. Don't even realize it. They're being tormented by the old man. And they do kill the old man. The problem is, is their position isn't too healthy when they're released. Amen? So when the spirit, the, if the new creation is released, but it's... If it's led by the old man, that person is in trouble. God have mercy. 1 Corinthians 2.14, let's speak it, please. Hallelujah. What did I say? 1 Corinthians 2.14, thank you. For in fact, the body is not one. Oh, I'm in 12, sorry. I got a one before my two. In verse what? 14. I love it. Let's speak it. But the natural man. So I want you to know that the natural man is not the spiritual man. Amen. When it speaks of the natural man. He's a heathen from get-go. That's not an insurance thing. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For, now Listen. The natural man does not receive the things of the the spirit, uh, uh, things of God. In other words, it's conviction from God from God. Amen. So these people can't receive conviction either. For they are foolishness to him. Ah, pooker. Nor can he know them. 
Because they are what? Spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual, he who is of the spiritual man judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Because God's his judge. Why? Because there's a relationship in God's presence. Everyone say relationship in God's presence. How can I explain something without offending? But listen, I've heard this over and over. I have a relationship with the Bible. I have a relationship with the Word. That's like somebody who, releases, who gets a letter from someone and is constantly rereading it. What about the person? There's a difference. Amen? The Word should always bring you into a relationship with the presence the person. When the word is preventing you from bringing you into the relationship of the person, then you're not so in the spirit. Does everybody get it? The word won't do that. That means the old man. How many of y'all know the devil knows the word inside and out? Oh, he knows how to manipulate the word of God. So that he, just because you're reading the thing, oh, I'm doing good. But you're missing God's presence the whole time. Then you can't overcome. You can't overcome sickness, disease. You can't overcome pains. You can't overcome things. Why? Because the old man has got control now. Amen? Not the new man. So is the person led by the spirit then? No. It's led by the flesh. Somebody understand that. Hallelujah. All right, let's go there. But in verse 16, for he who has known the mind of of the Lord that he may instruct him. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? The mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ. So what activates the seeds of God, the words of God? The Spirit of God, the presence of God. So there's not enough activation, is there? They can't receive and, or discern the things of God. Even if a Christian that reads the Bible but no presence of God to regenerate or refresh the seeds. Can't fertilize them. Amen? Ephesians 2. Hallelujah. You know, we are entering a time right now where there's so much foolishness and deception and lies and deceit and no matter where you turn. And there's so much false religions and doctrines of demons and deceiving, seducing, seductive spirits. And all of this other stuff that, that's just happening. Why? Because God is shaking everything. Anything that can be shaken is coming to the surface. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Wow. Now think about this. This is another presence. So without God's presence, an individual is still in this presence. Even if he is a new creation in Christ, it's what's being fed. Why? Because the enemy is using the old man to lead instead of the new man. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in our lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots and dead and trespasses, he made us alive again with Christ. For by his plan or grace you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus." I think a lot of people got kicked out of their seats in heavenly places. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, by grace, by God's plan, you've been what? Saved. Well, are you going to follow God's plan without God's presence? No. It's impossible. Hallelujah. Romans 7. Now, you got to remember, here's Paul. He's riding on his Harley horse. And uh, he's heading to Damascus 
to go attack some Christians, arrest them, and fulfill the call that he believed was handed down by his inheritance. And he believed he was doing the right things of God. Amen? So the Lord slapped him off his horse, filled him, and he got born again. The scales were removed, and Paul got filled with the Spirit of God. And he realized something. Whoa! I thought this was going to be an easier walk now. I thought things were just going to get smooth. I found that there's a narrow path that I have to walk in. And in verse 13, Romans 7, 13, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I what? Do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Paul's finding out something. Man, the all spirit filled, but what's going on here? There's some war within me that's constant. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is in God, that is good. But now, verse 17, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, that influences me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in my old nature, in my carnality, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. Others, I want to do the right thing. How to perform it, what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but that sin dwells in me. I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God, of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, my thoughts. And bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from this body, this carnal, this flesh of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man, he got revelation. So then, with the mind, with the thoughts of my, I myself serve the law of God. But in the flesh, the law of sin. So he began to realize that there was a separation between the old and the new man. And the old man kept influencing him. But he realized only through the spirit, the mind of Christ, could I overcome the old man. So I must feed myself, my new creation, that one that's in regeneration, being conformed into the image of Christ with the words of God. The words of God. The seeds of God. But they must be activated by the presence of God. And without the presence of God, those seeds cannot be activated. Then you know what happens? The devil comes to do what? Steal them. Hallelujah. Evil is, in present, is present in the old man. It's called flesh. Without the supernatural help and regeneration, there will be no change in the old nature will take dominion over the new spiritual man. 1 Corinthians 3. First Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to what? Spiritual, or to your spiritual man. But to your old man, your carnal man. As babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it. Even now you're still not able. For you are still what? You're still allowing the old man to lead your life. For where there's en uh, there envy, strife, division among you, are you not carnal, behaving like what? Mere men. Mere men, behaving like mere men, human nature. They were still carnal, behaving like natural man, not spiritual man. Colossians 1. Colossians 1. 
Colossians chapter 1. In verse 21. Hallelujah. Until death do us part. <laughs> Glory to God. Colossians 1.21. Let's speak it together, please. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, your thoughts, by wicked works, yet now he has re reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you what? Holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you what? Continue, if you're consistent in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. I now <coughs> rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship for which God was giving me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. To them God will to make known that which are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is who? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here is the new man. Does everybody get this? Christ in you is the new life of the spiritual man. Christ in you is the life of the spiritual man. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. He says, to this end I also labor, striving according to his workings, which works in me mightily. I want to say this again. Christ in you is the new life of the spiritual man. And without Christ in you, maintaining Christ in you, maintaining the seed of Christ in you, you will continue to walk in the carnal man. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 8. First John chapter 3 verse 8 He who sins is of the of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whoever has been born of God does not sin in other words his new Man, his spiritual man, his new creation in Christ will not sin. Unless the only thing that can happen is if he, he allows the new man, the old man, to be led. Does everybody get that? For his seed remains in him. Now, the devil comes to kill the what? Steal the seed, doesn't he? And he cannot sin because his, he's been born of God. So that's called a born estate as born or a state of being born again, where the seed of God is constantly being fer fertilized, nourished, and a new creation is being strengthened so that the old man has no influence. There is a separation. Does everybody understand that? Anybody understand that? Good. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. He says something very powerful. He says in verse 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Whoa, whoa. So the seed of Christ is not, is not stolen. So this is the hope to protect it from not being stolen or traded or not able to mature. Nobody understand that. This is what the enemy wants to he wants to either steal it, trade it, or not allow it to get matured. He doesn't want it to be fertilized so that the new man can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. 
to overcome the old man. Because the influence of the powers of darkness and demons influence the old man. It's the old man that is always attacking you. You can blame it on every demon you want. But if you open up, then the old man has a party. He sends out invitations to all his hells, his friends from hell, right? Matthew 13. You know, um, even when people get prayed for, many times they don't realize. And, and in the process of healing, that the enemy steals the process of healing. How many times have somebody accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the enemy stolen the seed? People have been prayed for, for deliverance and they're still bound. Because they don't have the faith or that area. The old man is still ruling, not the new man. They still believe everything the old man says. They needed to divorce the old man. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, verse 18. Let's speak it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, Hello, is that carnal? Yeah. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. And what seed is this? It's the seed of Christ. But he who receives seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. Why? It's not been fertilized. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles and gets carnal. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and a deceitful of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. And that can only come from the presence of God. Who indeed bears fruit produces it some hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So the seed here is either stolen through or, 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 or destroyed through temptations or overtaken. The cares of the world. Everything is because of no presence, no presence, no presence. No presence, no presence, no presence. It can't be fertilized. It can't mature. Amen? Second Peter verse 1. Second Peter verse one. Hallelujah. You know, to know the truth and not be able to walk into the truth is very dangerous. Second Peter verse one verse uh, chap uh, chapter one verse two. Let's speak it. This is vitally important. He says, "Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue." By which have been given to us exceedingly great and what? Precious promises. Is that in his word? Yeah. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So these promises and these seeds, if they're not fertilized, cannot produce the divine nature. And they are fertilized and regenerated by the presence of God. But also for this very reason, given to all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly, and brotherly kindness, to love. These things are yours and abound. You will never, what? 
You will never, you will never bear no unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness. Why? Because they're allowing the old man to lead, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from this old sins. That's where a person backslides. See, backslidden doesn't mean you have to go out and use. Backslidden doesn't mean when you allow the new old man to lead the new man. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. If you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The divine nature is the spiritual man, Christ in you. John 15, almost through. John 15. Hallelujah. You know, when, um, how can I say this? When the old man is leading or winning many of the battles of the new man, there's no discernment. There's no detailedness. There's no... There's more, car there's more looking in the physical than there is the spiritual. There's no reality that God sees all, knows all, hears all. There becomes false reality. The false reality has become self-successful, self-fulfilling, self. And it doesn't mean a person doesn't help, but those helps, there's those false fulfillments. I want to help people. I want to do all this for people. That's great, but it's still false fulfillment because the only thing that can fulfill you is God's presence in a relationship in his presence in person. Does everybody understand that? That's why many, look at what the words say. Many will come to him and say, Lord, I did all this, man. Look at all the people. Oh, look at all the people I fed. I did all this stuff. And he said, I don't know you. Why? Because God knows you by presence. By what? Presence. And that's what's happening all over the world right now. Hallelujah. First John, or John, John 15, verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word, whoa, which I have spoken to you. Then he says what? Okay, so you're clean because of the word, right? Then he says, abide in me, which means what? Presence. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So you go, man, you got my word, but now you got to abide. I am the true vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch is withered. They gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask and you will, what you, and you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you are my what? Disciples. Wow. Ephesians 6. I know sometimes you want to slap the hell of the old man and make room for heaven. Amen? But it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you got to drag the old man. He's kicking and bucking. I don't want to go. I don't want to get in God's presence. I don't want to speak the word. Ay, 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 ay. See, the old man's got an eye syndrome. In verse 10, finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that, the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil who uses the old man. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Many people still don't put on the full armor of God. I ain't got time for that. That means the old man is still leading. The new man desires the armor of God. He knows. Be strong in the Lord the power of his might. Amen. Psalm 103. And then one more scripture. Oh, yes. The spiritual man, the new man, the one that abides in Christ, knows the benefits of God and knows that he is true and faithful to complete them. And he's willing to wait on them to be completed. Verse 1, bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2, speak it. Bless the Lord all my soul and forget not his what? Benefits. Let me tell you, if you're, not, if you're being led by the old man, your benefits are erased from your memory. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah, we need some youthy. Amen? Every day, I pray for it. Lord. Exchange my aging for your youth. Hallelujah. There's some other things I ain't going to share with exchange. <laughs> Benefits of the spiritual man, of the divine nature. Hallelujah. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 5. <laughs> Till death do you bear. Remember, you don't have to be concerned about demons. You got an old man who sends out invitations to them if you let them. Verse 18. Hallelujah. That's, is everybody there? Glory. Vital, important information today. Verse 18, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Well, why? Because he's not led by the old man, the old nature. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one because they're carnal. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. Relationship in His presence. And we are in Him, hello, who is true. And in His Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. My children, little children, keep yourselves from yourselves, from idols. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect the seed that's been imparted in this revelation that you've released to us, that we may have full understanding why others don't hear us or see what we see or hear what we hear or make choices what we choose or follow or why don't they like your presence. But we love your presence, Lord. But you've given an understanding. It's because they're being led by the old and not by the new. So we pray, Lord, for rescue for those that are calling on your name to be new. That the manifestation of the new born again experience and the new creation of Christ will be manifested in them and through them. That the state of being of new born in the spirit will be manifested in Jesus' name.